Hi, we're going to look at what I think is a really interesting sound format, I guess, um, file standard, really, which is MIDI. So MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Make sure you learn this just in case. Musical Instrument Digital Interface, or MIDI for short. And what this is, is this standardized protocol which allows communication between electronic instruments, other devices, like lights in some cases, and also computers as well. And I've underlined this word standardized, it means a group of experts have come together and agreed certain rules, so that it's really consistent, there's not different versions of MIDI being used that aren't agreed by certain people, so that's why it's standardized, it's a formal, consistent way of doing it. A protocol is a rule for communication, or set of rules for communication, and here it's between electronic instruments and other devices and computers. So the purpose of MIDI is to work in the music industry and provide a common language for passing data around instruments and computers and other devices. And the data is passed around between these devices using what is called an event message or event messages. And we'll look at what is contained in those in a minute or two. But before MIDI was introduced in the early 1980s, each manufacturer would have their own standards and they would be proprietary, meaning each manufacturer, each company who made instruments would basically own the standard and they'd all be different and it means there was not much compatibility between different devices. An important aspect to how MIDI was designed and, and why it was really useful and took off is that it uses channels which are these independent paths which messages can travel through. So these event messages can go through different channels up to 16 I believe. So for example let's say we've got different devices, we've got a keyboard, a drum machine and a second keyboard. Each can have messages traveling through different channels and each one is independent so the channel one can be isolated from channel two you know you could be playing all of these instruments at once but in the computer you're able to separate channel one from channel two to channel three which is really useful so these different channels were enabling people to be able to play different instruments different synthesizers at the same time a synthesizer being this device which mimics a traditional device so a drum machine is a synthesizer it's not actually a drum kit but it sounds like it is when it's being played so maybe we've got a Yamaha keyboard, a Korg drum machine, and our second keyboard is made by Roland, a different manufacturer. Before MIDI, each would have their own standards and it would be difficult, to, difficult, if not impossible, to combine them somehow. With MIDI, you can use different channels and it enables a band to be playing these at the same time and saving the sounds at the same time independent of each other, which is really useful for editing. But also, crucially, MIDI enables a musician to play, say, the first keyboard at one time, then add a drum machine later on, then add that second keyboard later on after the drum machine, and then combine each channel on a computer to make your actual music. I mentioned that MIDI was invented in the early 80s, which I think makes sense when you think about how distinctive 80s music is, especially dance music, loads of layers where musicians were just recording different channels because MIDI enabled them to do this independently. They could just layer different sounds upon different sounds and it's really distinctive and would, it wouldn't really have been possible before MIDI or at least would have been much harder to do. So I haven't really said what MIDI is yet I suppose because we need to talk about what a MIDI event message is. So we know by now that everything regarding a computer must be done in binary and so event messages are just in binary, they're still represented in binary because they need to be to work with computers. These are not traditional acoustic devices right, they're electronic devices, synthesizers and computers and so on and so an event message is really a representation of some actions which are sent between different devices like a computer and a synthesizer. So for instance, let's say we've got a keyboard which is a synthesizer. Let's say the musician presses a key on this physical keyboard. What will happen is if the keyboard is plugged into a computer and it's using MIDI, an event message will get sent from the keyboard to the computer to whatever application they're using to record or edit their music. But the actual event message will say something like, okay, well note C on the keyboard has been played, it's been played for 1.2 seconds at 70% volume, and it's using the grand piano preset. Right, a synthesizer can change presets for different sounds, that's what it's recording. So really, that message is recording all of the information which is relevant to the key that the person has played. And then in the software, the producer is able to just play that sound whenever he or she wants, and also can edit it. So in the software, because MIDI is giving the actions, not the actual sound itself, the editor is able to then edit it if, they, if he or she wants to, changing the C note into a D note, maybe lengthening the sound itself, maybe increasing the volume, but maybe leaving a preset as it is. And so when it's played from the computer, again, another event message is sent to a speaker and the speaker can play out that sound. 
So what's important here is that the software is not actually sampling the sound itself, right? We, we haven't got a musician playing on a keyboard and a microphone is recording this and sampling it and then saving it inside our software. This is all done electronically. There's no actual recording going on. It's just say it's just copying the same information being played on the keyboard into the software. There's no sampling, no microphone here at all. Personally, if you've learned about vector images so far, I think of this as being like a vector image, whereas a normal microphone recording session would be like a bitmap. It's like a vector image in my analogy because we're just recording instructions really, or just properties of our sound. We're not actually recording the sound itself. Like a bitmap is actually showing every single pixel. A vector is more clever in a sense and is recording just for properties, which gives us lots of advantages, which we'll look at now. So, first of all, if we have a MIDI file, what is good about MIDI file itself, not just this general format, is a MIDI file has this standardized way for us to be able to save music sequences and also how we can send them. And also a MIDI file can be used by different devices and applications. So generally MIDI, this standardized protocol is really, really great because it can be used very easily between different devices. But the key point is here really that a MIDI file is not actually a binary version of actual recordings. What it is, is a binary version of a set of instructions for replicating the recordings. So it's saving properties like the notes being played, the timings and the instruments they are being played on, not the actual recordings itself. So for example, I could sit and play a keyboard and then talk over it and, or sing over it or whatever. And if I had a microphone, my singing would get recorded as the same file. The MIDI is separate. So MIDI would not record, would not replicate any of my speaking. It's just the instrument itself. Now, because we are saving just instructions, not the actual recording itself, it doesn't mean MIDI files have much smaller file sizes than recordings. Recordings are sampling thousands of times per second usually. So a lot of data being saved, whereas with MIDI we're just saving some instructions for what exactly is being played. And another advantage because of this is they're totally editable. So instructions can be changed very easily. On a computer, you just take that event message and edit it. And we don't also have issues with things like quality. So we don't have any limitation of quality coming from the MIDI file format. Whereas if we're saving it as an MP3, for example, with sampled sound, we have compression and the sampling rate not, might not be enough. Sample resolution might not be enough. But with MIDI, because we're not actually saving any sound itself, we're just saving instructions. The actual quality of the playback is derived only from our speakers. So if we've got rubbish speakers, the sound's gonna be rubbish. But if we've got decent speakers, it will be totally fine. But the actual quality is not coming from our file itself because we're just saving instructions. Instructions don't have any sound. It's coming from our playback device. But while there are lots of good things about MIDI, there are some limitations. So first of all, the main one being the MIDI only works with digital instruments. It's only working when we have these electronic synthesizers really. So like a drum kit, a normal drum kit would not work with MIDI unless you've got a very fancy controller or something crazy, but usually it wouldn't because it can't plug into a computer, right? But a drum machine could because it's electronic, it can plug into a computer. Same with acoustic guitar, doesn't have a normal connection, whereas an electronic guitar, electric guitar would be fine. And singing, we can't use a MIDI because well, any spoken word, rapping, singing, we can't use because it's far too complex to be able to represent using just instructions. We need to use a microphone and sample it and record it that way, which is fine. It just hasn't got the same advantages we looked at just now. And generally speaking, another disadvantage of MIDI is that because we are synthesizing with sounds, because we're not recording anything, we're just recreating sound from instructions, the sounds may not be realistic. You might miss little bits and pieces which you would hear if the person was playing in front of you, using an amplifier and so on. But with MIDI, we're synthesizing, it's not always totally realistic. And the final point is, it can actually depend, your sound can depend on your hardware being used. So a sound card is like a CPU just for dealing with sound, in the same way that a graphics card is just for dealing with graphics, like gaming and so on. And so different sound cards may lead to slightly different outcomes. Of course, our speakers will determine how it sounds, but there may also be small differences because of sound cards processing it in different ways. MIDI event messages can get clogged up sometimes as well. If you've got a fairly cheap sound card or cheap controller, it might be quite laggy because you've got loads of event messages and they're getting processed too slowly.